shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And give the Lord a dance. Today is the last day. Come on. Then one day, one day, one day, I met Jesus. Come on. He changed my life. Jesus, you are worthy. 
Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you every day. Do it like this. Come on. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you. Sing it, come on. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you. Sing it. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you every day. Protection. Then one day I met Jesus. He changed my life. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you every day. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you every day. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are lovely. You are worthy of praise. I will praise you every day. What Come on, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, are you ready? Uh, are you ready?
may be seated with Jesus' joy tonight. What a night. What a night. What a night. The Lord is going to make sure that you will not regret coming here tonight in Jesus' name. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you tonight to this fourth and final night of Healing Jesus campaign here in beautiful Monrovia, Liberia. Clap for Jesus. Before the servant of God comes, I want to make mention of two very important people who are with us tonight. We have many, many men of God who have helped to make this campaign a success. I want you to put your hands together for all the pastors, for all the helpers, and everybody, ushers, singers, committees, boards, club for Jesus. Let's appreciate them for making this campaign a success. Their reward is with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have with, with us also Senior Senator Jewel Taylor who has come to visit us tonight. Please put your hands together and let us acknowledge her presence. You are welcome, ma'am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We also have with us tonight, even though he's a man of God, preaching the word of God, he's also a senator, let's put our hands together and acknowledge the presence and welcome Senator Prince Johnson to give us a wave. You are welcome tonight. Hallelujah. Are you excited tonight? Are you excited tonight? But do you know that the greatest personality here is the Holy Ghost who is going to heal your body, give you your miracle, touch your child, Save your soul. Clap your hands for Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is a very, very special night. It is special because it brings to an end a campaign that began from Zuedro and has passed through about seven major cities of this beautiful country. By the grace of God, I know Liberia more than many of you because I've traveled through this country and indeed this is a very beautiful country. Clap your hands for what the Lord has done for this country. Hallelujah. And it's been night after night, day after day of campaigning for Jesus. And tonight marks the end of this memorable visitation. But one scripture which comes to my mind is better is the end of a matter than the beginning. We saw miracles in the beginning. The blind saw in the beginning. The deaf heard in the beginning. Paralyzed who were carried to campaigns began to walk in the beginning. So if there are better things tonight, then I cannot imagine what God has for us. Are you ready to receive better things tonight? Are you ready to enjoy better miracles tonight? I want you to rise to your feet and let us for the last time in Liberia receive the fabulous Daniel Bell.
everybody. I expect a miracle tonight. I expect a miracle today. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible to those who believe and say. I believe God's word is still the same. I expect a miracle tonight. your hands everybody father thank you for tonight thank you for your great power that is here thank you for your great presence and many many miracles of healing of deliverance of salvation for us today in your presence we thank you we honor you we give you glory we say lord have your way in our midst guide us by your holy power and let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Come into our hearts. Brood over this great congregation. Do great things in our midst. We welcome you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated if you have a seat. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to say thank you to all the pastors. Pastors are the most important people in any country because they are the people who are holding the spiritual gates of the nation. So I want to acknowledge and thank all the fathers, elders, bishops, those of you who have really opened your hearts to welcome us. Thank you. May God bless you and may God bless Liberia. Amen. We also acknowledge the senators, Senator Taylor. And Senator Johnson, Prince Johnson, who are here, thank you for your presence. The Lord bless you also. Amen. How many know that God is blessing Liberia? I see a new blessing coming into this nation. Hallelujah. Do you believe God for that? Amen. Today, I want to just preach a very short but important message. And it is about Jesus Christ, the Savior and the healer of this world. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Savior and the healer of this world. Amen. How many know that Jesus Christ is the Savior? Jesus Christ is a wonderful Savior of the world. Amen. Now, why do we say Jesus Christ is the Savior? In Luke chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Amen. A Savior is somebody who will rescue you from your situation, whatever the situation is. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only Savior you can expect in your life and you must expect to save you and to help you in this life. Amen. In every nation, we have had people who came saying that they were coming to save the nation. Have you had such people in this country too? Who came to save Liberia? Were they able to save Liberia? Were they able to save you from no electricity? Were they able to save you from no water? Were they able to save you from no schools? No jobs? No. In Ghana, once we had somebody who became a head of state, and people started to call him Junior Jesus. That is the G Junior of Jesus. Ju Jesus is Junior. But after many years of ruling, Ghana was declared highly indebted and poor country in the whole world. Were they able to save us? No. What about Jesus Christ? Has Jesus been able to save us from no electricity? No. Do you have electricity? When Jesus came to Jerusalem, there was no light. 
And when he left, there was no light. Yeah. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, there was no electricity. Or you don't know that. There was no electricity in Jerusalem before Jesus. After Jesus left, there was still no light. Hey. Before Jesus came, there was no running water in Jerusalem. After he left, there was still no running water. So was Jesus really a savior? What did he save us from? Hey. Before Jesus came to Jerusalem, there was no university in Jerusalem. After he left, there was no university in Jerusalem. The university was built recently. So was Jesus really a savior? Ah! Before Jesus came, there was the, the Romans, the Romans were, had colonized them. And when he died, they were still in power. Did he save them from their political enemies? No. So when you say Jesus Christ is a savior, my question is, a savior from what? Did Jesus provide jobs and industries? Did Jesus provide any industry? Did he create any jobs? I think he gave the apostles jobs. <laughs> and all of us pastors, he has given us jobs. <laughs> Millions of pastors over the years. We all have something to do because of Jesus. So if Jesus was not able to establish any industries, any manufacturing sector in Jerusalem, then what did Jesus Christ come to do? Why should we call him a savior? And I'm going to answer that question from the Bible, Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. It says, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. His mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, a just man, being a just man, who was not willing to make a public example, but decided to deal with her privately in the house. While he was thinking about these things, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 23. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, which is Yahoshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins. Jesus Christ did not come to save us from no electricity or no water or from romance or any political party. He came to save us from our sins. That is why Jesus Christ came. And your sins, your sins shall find you out, no matter who you are. Hey! Are there sinners in Liberia? Are you sure? One day I went to a prison. And I asked, what are all these people, what did they do? And one of the prisoners answered the question. He was holding a Bible. When you go to a prison, you will see that in every prison, they have only one good news. And that good news is that you are going to be free. They don't care whether there's a new president or there's light or whatever. Just good news for a prisoner is that I'm going to be free. I asked this prisoner... What did you do that brought you here? 
And he was surprised that I asked him that question. He said, oh, everybody here is a murderer. All of us, because that prison in Ghana is called the condemned cell. Every murderer is brought there. They have a place. It's a condemned cell. Everybody there has killed somebody before. And we have a place. You go upstairs. When you climb upstairs, there is a place you stand and there is a hole. And they hang you from there. They hang you from up. And you stand in, on the hole. And then they open it and you fall down. And your neck will be there. So all the people that were waiting to climb those stairs. And come down. Now what has put them in that difficult situation? Their sins. Everybody there has done something. That has put them in the prison. Everybody there has done something that has put them in the prison. One day I went to the prison in Ghana. And I saw all kinds of people. Hey! I saw Nigerians. I saw Ghanaians. I saw six Koreans. Koreans, they should have been in Korea, but they were in Ghana prison. I saw Chinese men. The Koreans are different from the Chinese. There were Chinese prisoners in Ghana prison. That's why I'm explaining there is nobody who cannot go to prison. And then I saw a Lebanese fellowship. Lebanese men. And then I saw a man from England. He was the oldest prisoner. He was wearing shorts. And he was working in the prison. And in Ghana prison, they'll give you gari with water. No meat, no stew. Do you have gari in Liberia? Yeah. Gari with water. And salt. Gari and salt. There is nobody who cannot be put in a prison. You may be a white man. You may be a Korean. You may be Chinese. You may be Lebanese. You may be Liberian. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may even be a president. If a human being can catch a a president from somebody's country and put him inside a prison... Do you think that God cannot catch anybody he wants and say, you, you are a bad man. Go inside the prison there. Hey! Most of us are working about freely, so we think that there is no problem. But our sins are upon us. Yeah, and God has seen all. I will say your sin shall find you out. Hey! How many have told a lie before? Lie. I want to see if there are anybody have told any lie in Liberia. Raise only your right. Don't raise two hands. Just only one hand. If you have told a lie before. Hey! I cannot look. There are too many liars in Liberia. Liberia is full of liars. How about on the stage? How many pastors have told a lie before? Wow! Okay, I want to ask you one question. How many have told 100 lies before? 100. Since you were born. Since you were born. Till now. You have told lies 100 times. Raise up your hand. Oh no. There is no hope. How many of you, so now you have one bag of lies full up. How many of you have stolen something before? You have stolen something before. Raise up your right hand. Hey! Liberia is full of thieves. What about the pastors on stage? How many have stolen something before? 
<laughs> How many have stolen chicken from your mother's stew before? Your mother's soup. You stolen some chicken before? Raise up your hand. Hey! Even the pastors have stolen before. So Liberia is full of liars and thieves. How can God allow liars and thieves to go to heaven? When you go to heaven, they have to form a police department in heaven. There is no police in heaven. Except when you come from Liberia, there will be a police station in heaven. Number three. How many have been jealous before? Jealous. Jealousy. Jealous. Do you have jealousy in Liberia? Those at the stadium. How many have been jealous before? Wave your hand. Wow. What about pastors? How many have been jealous of your fellow pastor? Look at all the pastors. Jealousy. Quiet. Don't laugh at somebody or think about yourself. Hmm. How many have slept with somebody who is not your wife, is not your husband, but you have slept with that person before in Liberia? Lift up your hand. Hey, fornication. As for that one, I will not ask the pastors. Because of fine protocol, I will not ask them. Liberia is full of fornicators. Hey! Four bags of sins. Four huge bags of sins. I'm proving to you today that you are a sinner. I'm proving to you. And I'm explaining that Jesus came to save you from your sins. He didn't come to give us light or electricity. He came to save us from something far bigger and far more of a problem to our lives than anything else. He came to save us from our sins. How many of you have killed somebody before? You will not raise your hand. The Bible says, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. How many have hated somebody before since you were born? That means all of you are murderers. If you have hated somebody before. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So, shh, this is why Jesus Christ is the Savior. You see, the Bible says, and to you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. And he shall save the people from their sins. That is why Jesus came to this world. He didn't come to give us new political dimensions. He didn't come to give democracy. Do you remember when Jesus came? He never mentioned democracy even once. Have you read the whole Bible? Have you seen democracy mentioned? Nothing has been mentioned. Jesus Christ came to save us from something specific. He came to save us from our sins. Yeah. And that is why Jesus Christ stopped preaching after only three years. A lot of people don't understand why Jesus stopped preaching. Why didn't he continue to travel? To travel to Syria, to Egypt, and to other places so that he could preach to all of Africa and he would have lived up to about 150 years old preaching. Why? Why did he stop after three years? Jesus Christ was in Galilee. And one day he turned around and he told the disciples, I am going to Jerusalem because in Jerusalem there are a lot of wicked pastors there who will kill me. So I'm going to Jerusalem to see where the pastors are. And when I get there, they will criticize me and catch me. And I will allow them. Jesus said, no one take my life from me. I lay down my life. No one, no one can catch me. I allow them to catch me. And when Jesus was preaching, you see, 
preaching of Jesus cannot save you. Shh, quiet. Nobody should talk at the back. Listen. Don't joke with what I'm saying. Nobody can save you from your sins. It is not preaching that saves you. The Bible says we are redeemed or we are bought by the blood of the lamb, the precious blood of Jesus. That is how a sinner full of lies, stealing, wickedness, hatred, you, are, you have been sentenced to die. You must be hanged. You must be executed. Now somebody will rise up and say, I want to pay for his life. Supposing this man come, has been condemned to die. He's, he's supposed to die. Stand here. Face me. He's supposed to die. And they're about to shoot him. Let's say I'm about to shoot. Then suddenly, one of the people get up here and says, I will pay for him. I will pay for him. Huh? You will pay for him? Yes. Can you pay? Yes. Do you know how much is for his life? You have to pay with blood. Your, your blood. Bring your blood. Aha, uh -huh, you are now not talking again. You are now not speaking again because the price for him is not money. It's not silver. It, you have to take your own blood and pay. If you don't give me blood, I will not give you his life. Will you give your blood? I'll give my, huh? I'll give my blood. This is what Jesus said. Greater love has no man than this. That a man will lay down his life for his friend. So the Bible says we are redeemed. We have been bought. Paid for. Your, your deliverance has been paid for with something. Not money. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And this is why God sent his son. God did not send his son into the world to make us rich. No. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should be rich and have ten houses. No. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes he should go to America seven times a year and drive the latest Mercedes Benz. But that is what some of us are preaching. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not go down to hell, but will have everlasting life. Thank you. The Bible says without, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Nobody can be forgiven. For the life is in the blood. And God has given blood to be what can be used to wash these sins away. Look, as I'm preaching here, I have one bag of lies, one bag of fornication, one bag of jealousy, one bag of murder, one bag of wickedness, one bag of hatred. All oh, my sins are too many. I cannot go to heaven because I am good. You cannot go because you are good. One day you will hear, you will hear that I'm dead. Don't believe it because I'll still be alive. And when I appear at the gates of heaven, when I see Peter standing at the gate, I will say, gentlemen, will you excuse me? I am coming inside. Why? Why will I come inside? Because I'm a preacher? Because I've preached to large crowds? Or because I built a church? Or because I married my wife? No. Because of the same reason why you can go. Because I'm washed by the blood. The blood of Jesus has paid a price for me. For my sin. The blood of Jesus has, has washed away my sins. That's the same reason why you can go to heaven. And that is why I came to Liberia. To warn you in Liberia. You cannot fool with God. God is not a fool. God has two sides. Love, but there is judgment. And you cannot escape. You see, after the war, you had reconciliation. 
Do you not have reconciliation? There are some of us here, we committed sins, you have escaped. But you cannot escape like that with God. God knows everything. The judgment day is coming. And that is why God sent me to warn you and to tell you, those of you who are playing with God and you take God to be a fool. You think God, you can do anything and get away. You think God is a man. You can do whatever you want and you will escape. Not so with God. You cannot escape. Even if you try. And that is why you must bow your knees to God. You see, during a war, some people escape. So we always have a mind that some can escape. So when, when we see God to, God to, some will escape. No. The Bible says, it is appointed to man once to die. And after that, judgment. Nobody, no matter how many vitamins you take, and whether you're, you are going to hospital in France, you cannot escape. One day you will stand like this and all your sins will be there. Except you have the blood of Jesus that has washed away your sins. I don't know what you will say. That's why I don't know how anybody can be saved except through Jesus Christ. God, I don't know what you will say when they start asking you, have you told a lie before? You see the questions I'm asking you, these are the questions of judgment. They will ask, have you told a lie before? When you even say no, they will release you 978 lies that you have told with the date and time. And you see that your case is getting worse. You cannot escape. One day there was a man, he was working in Nigeria, a Ghanaian. And he, his, his boss was a Nigerian man. And the Nigerian man really liked this Ghana man because he was very faithful. A lot of Nigerians like to employ Ghanaians. They find them faithful. So this man was working for this Nigerian boss. And one day, the Nigerian boss sent the Ghana, the Ghana man, who has worked for him for so many years, he sent him to the market to go and do some, buy something and come. A few minutes after he sent him to the market, the man came back to the house and his face Although he was a black man, his face was almost white. And he asked him, what is wrong? Why have you come quickly? And he told him, I saw something terrible in the market. And that's why I ran away. Do you know what he saw? Do you want to know what he saw? He said, when I went to the market, I saw death. And death looked at me. He was staring at me. And I was afraid. So when he came back to the Nigerian man, he, the, he told the man, I cannot stay here. I, I have to go to Ghana. I want to go to Ghana now. And the Nigerian man knew that this man has worked for him for so many years. He has not done anything bad. So when he heard him talk, he said, okay, you can go. So he bought a ticket right there. It was in the morning. He bought a ticket for him right there. Go to Ghana. But when the man went, this Nigerian boss was very angry. He said, who is it who could frighten my servant? So he put on his big Nigerian dress and went to the market himself. He said, I'm going to see who is there. When he reached the market, to his surprise, he saw death standing there. And you know Nigerians, they are very bold. He was not afraid. He went straight to death. He said, you, who are you? And death was looking at him. Who are you to frighten my servant? Why do you look at my servant like that? Why do you frighten him? Who do you think you are? I'm not afraid of you. Do you know what death told him? Do you want to know what death told him? How many want to know what death told that Nigerian man? Death was very quiet. And death told the Nigerian man, the reason why I was staring at your servant is because I have an appointment with him this evening in Ghana. 
and I don't know what he's doing in Nigeria now. You, you don't understand what I'm saying. He said, I have an appointment with him in Ghana today. So I don't know what is he doing in Nigeria by this time today. Why is he still here? And the Nigerian boss was shocked. And he realized that his servant has already taken the plane and gone to Ghana. And there he was going to meet with death. You see, you think you are escaping. But you cannot escape. Bible says it is appointed unto man once you will die one day. And after that, I tell you, as soon as you die, there will be no party. There will be nothing. The first thing is judgment. Everybody, when you die, when people die, you see, when you die, the first thing is judgment. As soon as you die, when you die like this, and you get up, immediately you are in court. You are in court straight away. Yeah. When the rich man died, when, the, when Lazarus died, the poor man, he died. You see, when people die, when the, when the poor man died, he fell down like that. He was dead. Then his spirit will get up. And you see your body lying on the floor. All those who died in the world, that is what happened. They got up and they saw. If they cut off their head, they saw their, their head here and their body here. And they were standing there and said, Ha! Ah, I'm dead. I'm dead. And the Bible says, angels, angels came and carried the poor man and carried him, they took him to heaven. Angels escorted him because there are a lot of demons around. So the angels came and escorted. These are angels. And they came to escort the poor man all the way to Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah. And the rich man, he was also having a meeting one day. And he had a heart attack. And suddenly he fell down. Then he got up. Huh? And he saw the people meeting. Everybody was there. But no, and he saw himself. He saw himself lie on the floor. Some people were pumping his heart. Trying to make him. Some people were giving him oxygen. He was standing there looking as they were pumping. 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 Get up, Mr. Mr. Big Man. Wake up. Wake up. But the real man, he was standing there. And he was watching them as they were pumping. Then, no angels came for him. Read your Bible. No angel came for him. The demons, the demons suddenly saw that they have got one more person who's, who has not been washed by the blood. And they saw the sin. They said, hey, we have got more, one more Liberian. And the demons came and they ran after him. The demons came and they ran. Hey, ah, hey, hey, ah! And there was no defense. There was no defense because, because there was no blood. There was no covering. His sins were not washed away. His sins were there. Hey. And the rich man was taken. They held his hand. They held his hand like this. Down, 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 down. He went down to the earth. He disappeared down. Some of you thought I had disappeared. I'm still, I'm still here. Down. Hey. Look, there are a lot of people under here. He went down. And in hell, he was suffering. Hey. Hey. He saw Lazarus. When he saw Lazarus, Lazarus was enjoying. Hey, Lazarus was drinking Coca-Cola with ice block. Lazarus. So when he saw Lazarus, hey, he saw Lazarus enjoying. Lazarus was enjoying. Brother, how does this thing open? <laughs> he saw Lazarus. Lazarus was enjoying some angels. Some lady, lady angels were even serving him. Ah, Lazarus was. Mm -mm. Ah, this is so nice. 
Lazarus was happy. And Lazarus was singing. Hey, what is the song you were singing? Victory, victory. Eh? Lazarus was singing. Lazarus was, Lazarus was very happy. Lazarus, he was a poor man when he was on earth. No money, nothing. But now he was happy. Then, the rich man was far away. And he saw Lazarus. Ah! Lazarus in the rich man's bosom, enjoying. And he saw Abraham, he shouted. And he cried, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. For I'm tormented. I'm suffering. I'm suffering. I beg you. I beg you. Tell Lazarus. Look at the water he's drinking. Tell Lazarus that he should give me just one drop. One drop. He said, I want Lazarus to give me one drop of water. Just one drop. Because he saw him over there. And he was shaking. He was crying. Remember, he was a rich man. He was a rich man. He was used to air conditioning. And he was in the fire. He was, he was turning like this. He was turning. He was screaming. God sent me to Liberia to warn you. You fool with God. Pastors are not telling you about hell. I came to tell you about hell. Hell is a real place. If you fool, you will go there. And you will scream forever in that place. Then Abraham told him, son, remember. He said, remember. Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this, there is a great gulf between us and you that you cannot cross. Everybody look at my hand. You see my hand? I came to invite you to take God seriously. Those who are fooling. Eh? Those who say you are Christian but not really. It's like half and half. Everything. Lying, stealing, killing. Everything you used to do, you are still doing it. There's no sign of Christianity in your life. God said, look at my hand. You will remember. Because one day, if you go down to hell, God will say, remember. You remember that bright man who came? And he told you, he shook the water. And he told you about the rich man in hell. And that the rich man was struggling. And the rich man was asking for one of Lazarus', Lazarus drink. He wanted some of Lazarus drink. Just one drop. You say, you remember that guy? You thought he was crazy, huh? You thought he was just crazy speaking and shouting on the stage. Remember. Then suddenly, the rich man changed his message. And he said, I have... He became an evangelist, more evangelistic than most pastors today. He said, I want to send missionaries now. Today, pastors are not sending missionaries. But the rich man in hell, he wants to send pastors and evangelists to go and preach to the rich man. To his brothers. There are five brothers in Morovia. Five brothers in Banga. Five brothers in Ganta. Five brothers in Swedru. Lest they come to this place also. He was not thinking about his houses. He said, this is a place of torment. You see, people don't know why Jesus came. That's why I came to tell you why Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ is the savior. He came to save us from our sins. To wash us. He didn't come to make us rich or poor. Or give us light or water. He came to save you and me from our sin. He says, turn around and follow him. Take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. You think it's easy to be a Christian? If you want an easy religion, resign from Christianity this evening. Never come back to church again. If you want something easy, leave today. This, this is your last day. I'm sucking you from the church. There's nothing easy about being a Christian. There's nothing, anybody who is telling you that it's easy, it's, not a, it's a false prophet. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Follow me to where? Follow me to suffer. We are all suffering. We all have to suffer. Then Abraham said, no, let them hear the prophets. Let them hear them. They have, Abraham, they have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. And the, and the rich man was still arguing. He said, but nay, if one rose from the dead, they would believe. But Abraham said, nay, my son, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Listen carefully. Jesus Christ came to save me. 
because I was a wicked person. My sins were plenty. Whether you can see them or not, everybody is a wicked sinner. Some of us, we haven't had power before, but if you were to have power, you would be wilder than anybody you have heard of. It's only you are powerless, that is why. But if you were to get power, hey, you will not be easy at all. Tonight, I came to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your savior from your sins. And I want to ask you, if you are serious with God, to turn around. Somebody said, what, is, what does it mean to repent? To repent, simple one word, turn around. Turn around. You are going this way, you turn around and go this way. That is the meaning of repent. And Jesus said, if you don't repent, you will perish. You will go to hell. If you don't turn around. Today, your sins must be washed away. Jesus is a savior and he's a savior of us from our sins. Tonight, how many want this savior to come into your life? He is also a healer. We know that Jesus is a healer. And he will, heal mirac- he will do miracles practically in our midst today. Because he's a healer and he's a deliverer. But the number one thing that he came to do, God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. That whoever, no matter, who, no matter what you have done, how, what, no matter your color, whoever, whosoever, whosoever, anybody, hey, this is too great. Whosoever believes in him, not whosoever has money. You don't have to have money. If only you believe. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is why God sent Jesus Christ to be a savior. He came to say, unto you this day in the city of David is born a savior, and he shall save his people from their sins. Tonight, I see the blood of Jesus flowing from heaven to wash away all your sins. Not everybody can save you. Not every blood can save you. That's why the Bible says we are not saved by the blood of bulls and goats. One day my friend was dying in the hospital and he needed blood. And I went to the blood bank of Ghana big hospital. And there was no blood. In the world, there was no blood. So I went to the blood bank. When I got there, I said, I need this blood. There was, the whole place was full of blood. I opened the fridge myself. I opened it myself. And I saw blood, blood. And the man, I said, all this blood, give me one. And the man said, the type of blood that can save your friend. Look at all these. None of them can do the job. The blood of a sheep cannot wash your sins away. Those who are making juju sacrifices, the blood of a goat, the blood of a chicken, or the blood of a child, or the blood of a human being cannot save you. That is why when I opened the fridge and I saw all the blood, I said, can these ones not save me? They said, none of these can, none of these. Then I saw a table, a brown table on the side. It was full of blood in, in plastic bags. And I said, what about this one? They said, this one is expired. I said, expired. I didn't know that blood expired. Oh, it is, it's expired. Last month, it expired. We cannot use it. That is why God did not send a man or an angel. He needed a blood that will never expire. A blood that will never lose its power. A blood that will never diminish in its power. A blood that will go for thousands of years and be able to wash the blood of thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people. The blood of Jesus Christ that will never lose its power. And tonight, that is the blood that I'm presenting to you today. The blood of Jesus Christ. Bible says without the shedding of this blood, there cannot be forgiveness in Liberia. And tonight I see the blood coming. It's going to wash. How many want this blood to wash away your sins tonight? Then stand up and lift your hand up. If you want the blood of Jesus to wash away your sins, stand up right now. I'm going to pray with you. It's very important. The blood of Jesus is going to wash away your sins right now. 
Now, if you think you are okay, maybe you, you are not a liar, you, you are not a thief, you, you have not done anything bad, then you don't say, don't, you don't pray this prayer. But if you feel that you are a sinner and you need the blood of Jesus to wash, then lift up your two hands and I'm going to pray especially with you. But if you feel you are okay, don't lift up your hand and you can sit down. But if you feel that you need the blood of Jesus to wash away your sins, then lift up your two hands and whatever I pray, pray after me. Say Jesus. Jesus, thank you for tonight. Oh God, tonight is my night. Oh God, I know I am a sinner. I am a dirty, dirty, dirty sinner. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, please forgive me. Please wash me from all my sins, from all my wicked ways. Tonight, I open my heart. Come into my heart, Jesus. Wash away my sins, all my lies, my murder, my stealing. My fornication, my jealousy, all my sins. Please wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus Christ. From tonight, I open up my heart and I receive Jesus as my Lord, my Savior, and my Master. Dear Father, please write my name in the book of life. Hey, everybody say, Jesus, please write my name in the book of life. Tonight, I register. I'm registering now in the book of life. I accept you as my savior and my master. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer today. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Wave your two hands and say, Jesus. You are my savior. Jesus. You are my savior. You are my master. You are my Lord. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer today. Now say after me, Satan. Satan. Listen carefully. From tonight, I will not serve you again. From tonight, I will not obey you again. I belong to Jesus Christ. Satan is finished. Me and you is finished. It's over. It's finished. No more. I will not follow you again. I belong to Jesus. Say, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I am washed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, give Jesus a mighty, mighty clap offering of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Wow. How many of you feel happy that you have prayed this prayer tonight? Wow. Hey. One day, what I described to you will happen practically. One day you will die practically. You will either go up or you will go down. But I see you going up through the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Lift your hands up. Father, thank you for your great power. You are not only the savior from our sins, but also the healer. And we thank you tonight that your great power is here to heal and deliver. And right now I see a hand. There is a hand that is moving in the congregation. And the hand is lifting you out of captivity. The hand is taking you out of the chair where you are sitting and putting you in a new chair. Receive your deliverance from wickedness and from darkness. The powers of the devil are broken in your life from tonight. He is the Lord that is healing you today. Wherever you are, miracles are taking place. If, if you can stand up, I want you to stand. If you are sitting down, I want you to stand. Because miracles are happening. So many miracles are taking place. Put your hand. This is the moment. Put your hand where your problem is. Whatever problem you have. I don't know what problem you came with tonight. But put your hand wherever the problem is. There is somebody here. You got a problem in your, your stomach. God is, I see the hand is taking the stomach out the, 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 the sickness out of your stomach you are being delivered I see God is doing an operation on somebody right now I see a healing hand there is a healing hand massaging you and healing you right now leprosy is being healed every skin condition is being healed receive it now somebody in a wheelchair God's power is flowing yes the power of God is flowing somebody you are here there is a curse on your life but tonight the curse is being broken receive it in jesus name it's like a curse of frustration and confusion that curse is broken tonight in the name of jesus receive your deliverance right now from the clutches of wickedness and demons the power of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost is flowing all over this place receive your miracle somebody's being healed in the breast right now receive your miracle right now the anointing of the holy spirit is flowing in this place take it now take it now take it somebody's being healed in your knee in the leg receive it now somebody your leg is shaking the power of god is flowing into your leg through your leg through your body right now it's trembling it's shaking receive the anointing right now receive the power of god the healing anointing of the lord is flowing in this place now thank you lord you are the lord you are the lord you are the lord your hand where the problem is somebody feels like heat is passing through your body somebody you could not see but God is opening your eyes right now receive it receive it now I said now is the moment receive it now the power of God the Holy Spirit is flowing all over this place angels are all over this ground miracles are taking place miracles are taking place receive it Satan I bind your power right now everybody put your hand on your head Satan, I bind your power. I cast out devils from all the people standing here in Monrovia in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Every demonic presence, every tormenting spirit, every controlling spirit, every manipulating spirit, every pressure in Jesus' name, I cast you out. Be free now. Be loose from every mental sickness, depression, 
tears, midnight tears and crying, sir. sleeplessness, every curse of wickedness, I bind your power right now. Lift up your hand and thank God. You are free from every power of the enemy in the name of Jesus. examine yourself right now whatever you could not do before whatever you could not do before begin to do it now this is the moment now right you could not walk rise and be healed I just saw somebody coming to give an offering who could not walk uh, 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 yes two nights ago the person was not able to walk for six years she just I saw her coming here well, wherever you are the power of God is rise and be healed this is the hour this is the moment the power the angels everything is moving right now receive it 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 now this is the moment angels are moving the holy ghost is moving receive it now in the name of jesus thank you lord 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 you are the lord that you think about right now do what you cannot do you cannot hear begin to hear you cannot see begin to see the power of God is flowing in this place you are the Lord wow. miracles are happening look at that right now if God has healed you if God has healed you whatever it is God has done for you I need you to come very quickly tonight we are not going to take a long time so I need you to come very quickly if God has touched you, wherever you are, if God has healed you, maybe you could not see, but now you can see, now you can see, now you can see. You could not hear, but now you can hear. You could not walk. There is somebody else, you have not started walking. God is saying, rise and be healed, walk now. You can walk. God's power is healing you right now. Wherever you are, if God has touched you, come to the front now, come to the front, come to the side. Run, 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 run. Check yourself. Today is Sunday. Today is the last day. I'm going to pray a final prayer. Nobody should walk out of here. There is a last blessing. Don't move. If you move, you are not going with a blessing. Everybody stay where you are. I will pray a final blessing before we leave. If God has healed you, come now. Come now. Come now. Come quickly. Come now. Come quickly. If God has touched you, come on. We adore you. Oh, praise our No, no matter the problem, maybe you were bitten by a snake. Somebody here, you were bitten by a snake. God's power has touched you. You are healed. Come. Come right now. Whatever the problem, come right now. Who is there Please. like you? Oh. was buried on the third day he rose again when the mighty storm arose he spoke and the storm was gone oh, oh, oh. he was crucified
crucified, he was buried On the third day, he rose again When the mighty storm arose, he spoke and the storm well, was gone you are, if God has touched you, come now Oh Lord, oh Lord You were bitten oh, by a snake And God has healed you, come Come right now oh, we worship you Oh Prince of Peace God has opened your eyes. Come right now. Oh, we adore you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh, we adore you. Wherever you are, we worship you. Oh praise of peace, oh praise of peace. God has set you free. Spirits, come on. The name of Jesus is a wonderful name. We proclaim this wonderful name. The name of Jesus is a wonderful name. Nobody should move. I'm going to pray the final blessing before we leave. If you go now. Before we are finished, you are not going with your blessing. So everybody must wait patiently. There's going to be a final blessing. A final blessing. Final blessing. The devil fears the name. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Peter said, silver and gold, I buy not. In the name of Jesus, rise and be There was a layman at the temple gate. He saw Peter and John. He asked for some money. But Peter said, silver and gold, I buy not. In the name of Jesus, rise and Peter and John, he asked for some money, but 
Somebody, God has opened your eyes. Lift up your hands and shout, Thank you, Jesus. She's a nurse. She's a nurse. She had a cataract of the left eye. Tell us your now, story. What happened? Well, I've been sick for two years now, three years. I have cataract in my eyes. I'm a nurse, I'm a CM, and now I'm a pastor too. So I've been coming here since then, two or three days to say. But now, while I was sitting there, we were praying. When I opened my eye, I could see my neighbor standing inside me. But you could not see your neighbor before? No, I couldn't see with my eyes. It's not open. I can see you. She had. I see my sister. It's amazing. And before you could not? No. And so when you open your eyes, you could see. I could see the light was shining. Then I open my eyes. Yeah, the thing I had in my eyes. Always my brother can bring me. But now I can see. Wow. Everything I talk about the Come, everything I talk about the So she's a pastor from the house of prayer church. House of prayer church. Yeah. And she's also a nurse, so she knows what she's saying. Clearly, exactly. She knows exactly what is wrong with Doctor, her. Doctor, is this a miracle? It's a miracle. This is a cataract. You cannot just have a spontaneous dissolution solution to this. The cataract must be removed. You don't take tablets. There is surgery that is done to remove it. So suddenly you could see the person by your side. Uh, yes, the, the, the brother there. I said, oh, I can see. I see the color of your clothes. He said, go up and let the people know. <laughs> wow. So if I close your eye, this right eye, you could see well here. Not so. This was the one with the problem. So if I close this, can you see the evangelist now? Mark. Sorry. Huh? He's holding the mark in his hand. He's, can you see his hand? He's waving to me. Can you count? Can you count his fingers? One, five, two. Show, show, Baba How do you test eyes in the hospital? You test it in the hospital two ways. By asking the patient to read letters on the chart. Okay. Or if you don't have it, at the OPD, you ask them to count fingers. Like this, just like we are This doing. is done in the hospital. Wow. So in their folders, we write. Is it write, true? 
You are a nurse, is it true? Yes. Wow. So you see, we are having a clinic. We are having a clinic. This is OPD. This is OPD. With supernatural healing. Father, thank you for your power tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Olivia, what's happening? Evangelist, this man that you see walking here was sick and for one month he could not see, he could not talk, he could not walk. He was lying in bed, could not see, could not walk, could not talk for one month. When he came back, he was probably like, son, come. Is that your son? Yes, he bats him. He is the one who bats tell, him. Tell us His what father. happened to your, is it your father? Yeah, my what? father was in coma for 32 days. Yeah, he couldn't see, he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk. He couldn't listen to people and move his hands. So, I mean, I'm very grateful. I'm, I, I seen this question. I said, well, but what woke you up? He said, he, he, the power of God got in his legs. I think... If you can bear me with this, people were uh, standing by me. He walked from his seat all the way to the, the stairs. All over there? All the way from there. He walked all the way from there. And he could not walk before? Could not at all. He couldn't walk. He, he doesn't he, he can't even walk. I always bathe him, dress him, and bring him. Whatsoever. Even to go to the clinic, whatsoever. I do everything for him. But I'm very surprised today. To just walk by himself wow. from his seat to the stairs. Wow. Give the Lord a wow. I, I give, give the Lord a shot. Give the Lord a shot of praise. Come on. Give the Lord a shot. Give the Lord a shot. Give the Lord a jump. A jump. A jump. A jump. A shot. A jump. A shot. A jump. A shot. A jump. A shot. Hallelujah. Can you, can you see me? Yes, I can see you well. You can see me well. Thank you. Wow. Has God done something wonderful for you? Surely. I knew he would do it for me. I you knew, knew he would do it for you. I knew God can he do it. He knew God was going Hallelujah. to touch him tonight. Hey! Why don't you give Jesus a mighty shout? Hallelujah! Could not walk, could not talk, could not stand, could not do anything. But this is the one who bats him. Right here. He bats him. And tonight, oh God, your God. Father, thank you for your great thank power. Thank you, Lord. Tonight. Thank you, Lord. He has begun to mend. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Amen. You are blessed. Everybody shout Jesus. Come on and shout Jesus. Everybody shout Papa. Come on and shout Papa. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Give the Lord a shout. Doctor, do you believe in miracles? I believe in miracles. Why do you believe in because miracles? Because I believe in God. Wow. Clap for Jesus. Somebody shall believe. Come on and say believe. Come on and say in God. This is a pastor with his white cane, totally blind for nine years. This is a pastor. Huh? Nine months, totally blind from diabetes. He could not see at all. Tonight, the power of God has opened his eyes. He's a pastor? A pastor. Let him speak. Are you a pastor? Yes. What happened to you? Uh, I was diagnosed with diabetes in the Ivory Coast 97. Since then, uh, it has been bothering me even when I returned to Liberia. From hospital to hospital, been, uh, about nine months ago now, my eyes went totally blind and weak. I can't balance to walk. And so, but from last night, I started to notice to see my fingernails. You came here last night? Yeah, last night, I saw my, I could see where I was sitting at. In the I rain? Did, I started to see, yes, in the rain, I started to see my fingernails like right now. So when I raised my 10 fingers up, I could see my palm and see the 10 fingers. Wow. Wow. Last night. And even tonight. So when we came this evening, I told my wife, I want to go and speak tonight so that the devil can be shamed. To know I'm a servant of the living God and I will preach. But here, yeah, Pastor, one more, one last thing, Pastor. Uh, the, 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 first, the first Sunday in March, when I went to church, as I was sitting down, when I opened my Bible, I noticed the prints of the Bible, the way the columns are in the Bible. But this coming Sunday, next Sunday, when I go to church, I want to be able to read the Bible. That's why I came here to tell Satan he's defeated. I will read the Bible. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you can count my fingers. Can you count? Can you see me? 
Yeah, you are in white. I'm wearing white. Yeah, you are all over wearing white. And you are, you are light-skinned man. I'm a what skin? A light skin. Nice. Light, light, light. light. Like I'm so. a light skin. Yeah. So you could for nine months you could not see at all. Nothing, but I can see your hand moving her. You, you can see talking. my hand moving. Yeah. That's his wife. His wife is laughing. Hey, are you surprised? Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah. Is that your wife? Yeah. Yes, my, my wife. husband I'm very happy to see because now Moses went blind. His pastor, I could only I think most of the pastors know him. Yeah. He been giving he been blind, he couldn't see, but I'm happy so that he can see. He couldn't see how beautiful you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, thank God. Look, you see, this is a cane, this is white. Yeah. When a man has a white stick, it means he's blind. Every, every a real a blind man has a white. You are not allowed to use a white one if you are not blind. Okay? That's why he has a white. You not see at all. And he can count, he can see. I want you everybody to give Jesus a mighty, mighty hallelujah. Everybody blow your trumpet. Wow. Five. The Lord has healed this man. Wow. Blindness from Father, diabetes. Father, I thank you for a perfect and complete healing. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody who has an eye problem, put your hand on your eye right now. Anybody who has an eye problem. There is a there is an anointing and an angel for eye healings right now. Receive it. Father, thank you for every eye problem that I pray for now. In Jesus' name, be healed. Receive it. Receive it and give thanks and glory to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Olivia, what's happening? Evangelist, this woman gave birth 2008. Five months later, she became paralyzed. Wow. And needed this to be able to make any move but tonight after the prayer the sister realized that strength had come into the leg and she walked all the way by herself wow. tonight is it true yes you could not do what walk a loom with a stick and now you can walk yes you gave birth yes and after this happened i gave birth to tasi it to femona starts to experience it this 2008. Yes. That's when the problem started. Yes, yeah, began five years. Yes. It's five years. Five years. Walk, let's see. Walk, let's see. Hallelujah. Doctor, what could have caused this? Inability to walk after delivery yes. is due to what we call diastasis of the pubic bone. Wow. What is that? Diastasis. The bone splits. There's a bone in front of us here which connects everything. Okay. And during delivery, if it's not done properly, the bone separates and that leads to paralysis. My God. Diastasis of the pubic My God. Take yeah. a sense. And tonight, she's walking. She's walking. Father, I thank you for your perfect healing. For this Hallelujah. Day. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord Jesus a mighty clap. Hallelujah. Is a mighty How many God. know that God has begun a wonderful healing in this lady? So diastasis. many miracles tonight. Wow, what is diastasis of the pew? It's separate. Because of the pressure of delivering the baby, as the baby is coming out, because of the pressure, the bone separates. Mess. Everybody who is pregnant, lay your hands on your stomach right now. If you are pregnant or you are expecting a baby this year, Father, I thank you for healing for all pregnant women and deliverance from evil. In Jesus' name, you shall deliver your baby safely. More wonderful Liberians will be born this year in Jesus' name. Swellings are disappearing tonight. Swellings. Swellings. Tell us. In Jesus' mighty name. While the evangelist were praying, he said we should lay our hands to whatsoever place we have sickness. I was carrying this sickness for six what years. What is the sickness? The what? sickness is growth. Some are appendage too. Sometimes directing choir, I cry. And where I was, went for hospital. Where was the growth? Where? Too sad. Yeah. Too sad of my penis. The growth now. Too my pressure go down. Like, how should see that kind of a way? Two sides of what? Yeah, two sides. His penis. I came with a swelling and my friend told me say you need to go hospital 
for operation with pain. But I said, well, I believe the word of God. Wow. I can't go on operation because the Bible says healing is my portion. So when the evangelist will pray, he said, lay your hands to whatever place the signal is. And I believe and I encounter the power of God and absolutely advantage. I'm healed. Swelling. I that How long has it been there for? More than six years. Six years? Yes. And I go on there worshiping. I'm a director also of Mr. Choir. But I believe God. Yeah. Six years swelling. Doctor, what yeah. swellings are these? It's likely to be strangulation of an inguinal hernia. Recurrent. Yes. Yes. Is that what, it, is that what yes. they say? Yes. That's it. Strangulation. And he came tonight with a pain. Strangulation. Which is a very serious condition which requires surgery. And he came tonight with the pain and the swelling. And the power of God has... I went to the back to examine him myself at the back here. Oh, you examined him? I examined him myself at the back okay. here. There's no swelling. Wow. On the two sides of the penis? Bilateral. Bilateral in Guinea Head. Yes. Father, thank you for your power tonight. In Jesus' name. Everybody, lay hand on your secret place where there is a secret problem. Let me pray for your secret problem. If you can't put your hand there, put your hand on your heart. Father, I thank you for healing of secret problems tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Olivia! Evangelist, when this child was five years, they discovered that she had hernia. Big lump here. Hernia? Hernia. Can, can a little girl have a hernia too? And they said that she needed surgery. She's now nine years. So it's been there for four years. They said when it's severe, she can't even sit down in the classroom. They have to bring her back home. But tonight, when you're praying, her sister said that she put her hand there. After that, her sister is gone. She pressed it. There was nothing there. They brought her here. Dr. Nabi has examined there. There is no hernia. There is no nut. There is no pain. Everything is gone. Jesus, Everything is gone. Him it's him a miracle. Lift him up. Wow. Lift him Doctor, up. what is this likely to be? It's also a female. A female. She, she could actually have femoral. either a hernia or a femoral hernia. Yes, a femoral hernia, which is a weakness. One that's a weakness in the muscle, part of the intestine, intestine will, push out. will push out. And that's the problem. But the power of God has healed her tonight. These are Father, surgical miracles. Thank you for this wonderful miracle tonight. In Jesus' name. Three years. Power of God. So many miracles out there. What's happening, Olivia? Evangelist, you said that somebody's being healed from a snake bite. Snake? That's the one. one. She's the one. What happened to 2004, you? 2004, bitten by the snake in the night. Were you sleeping? Yes, I was sleeping. It began my kid from Nigeria. We now had no where to sleep. So I, I was stopping my mom, the local boy shop. So while sleeping, and I get her to stop from my foot. That kind of way, I jumped from sleep. And I was sleeping with my, with my son and the other children. So when I wake up, I look for her, I couldn't see her. And from that day, and that today, I still feeling the pain in my legs. So when you are praying, and my legs begin to shake, the legs begin to shake. Your legs started shaking. shaking. Again. They started shaking. So you said, somebody's legs is shaking. Somebody's legs is shaking. My legs keep shaking. And from there, you said, somebody get snake break. And my mind ran on. And because that knows that pressing into in me. Where it came from, I don't know. Only God knows. And is the pain gone? The pain gone. The pain is totally gone. It's gone? Yeah. The legs have been giving me a hard time when I want to wear my shoes, sometimes I go to church. It pee me a lot. Really pee me. Walk this way, my dear. I want a shock for what you do for me. I want a shock for what you do for me. I want a shock. I want a shock. I want a shock. I want a shock. I want a shake. I want a shake. I want a shake. Is a mighty God. This girl also woke up one morning and realized that she could not walk well. She had a limp. But the power of God touched her tonight. Walk, let's see. Are you alright? What happened to you? It was 10 years. 10 years ago. 2010. Three okay. years ago. But can you walk better now? Yes. When I was sleeping, I had a snake bite. And when I got on my legs, started hurting and couldn't bend it for now. How do you know a snake bit you? I was sleeping when a snake bit my 
my foot. Did you see the snake? Yes. Since then, I can still have snake dream. Was it a real snake in a dream, or you actually saw the snake in your house? Real snake in my dream. It's real like, snake in your dream. Yes. And since you got up, you couldn't walk. Yes. Satan, your power is broken Jesus tonight. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Are you a Christian? Are you washed by the blood of Jesus? Yes. Are you a real Christian or you are fooling around? I'm That's serious true. now. Are you fooling around or you are a real Christian? I'm fooling around. You're fooling around? Yes. For now, I want to be a real Christian. And I want for God to save me. Tonight is your last night of fooling around. Yes. Is it clear? All those who are fooling around, tonight is your last night of fooling around. If you are for Christ, stand for Christ. No mixture. Is it clear? Otherwise, you open the door to evil spirits in your life. Asthma is being healed tonight. Asthma She's healed crying. tonight. She's crying. Thank you, Lord. Quick, 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 quick. You deserve the glory. What happened? Heart problem. Yeah, Heart problem is healed. Heart problem is healed yes. tonight. Yes. Thank you, Lord, in Lord, Jesus' name. Bodily pain healed tonight. Bodily pain. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heart, name. Heart, name. name. You heart condition. Glory. She had a heart condition. What happened Couldn't to move around easily. There's a little child with a heart disease. Yes. What happened to your baby? She's my niece. For the past three weeks, her father took her at the hospital, at the hospital. Whenever she run fast, whenever she play, her heart beat faster. Wow. So when they took her at the hospital, the doctor said, if she continue with the heart beat faster, she has to do surgery. Yeah. If possible, she will lose her life. And what happened tonight? Tonight, the, fast, the heart beat faster, the pain, everything gone. What happened to you, my dear? What happened? The time my father came into the hospital, the doctor said I get a heart problem. The pain go down. Pain go Hallelujah! Down. Thank you, Jesus. It's likely to be what we call a congenital heart disease. That is why her heart is beating and that she was born like that. Father, thank you for your power. Oh. So the healing is child. The healing happened yesterday. So yesterday. Today she played fine. She's she's playing now? Yeah, she played well today. She ran up and down today. Running up and down. Yeah. When a child has a heart disease, he cannot play like a normal child. That is the main symptom. They cannot play. They cannot run. And so they're always at home. They always sit down. They always And they're like always outcast. But they cannot run. They cannot play. That's what happened to Kenneth Hagen. Ah, yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So and she's, today, she's been running around today. Yes. Since then, she's been running Sunday. around today. Wow. Yeah. Father, thank you for your power tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, you are great. Motorbike you accident. Are great. Motorbike accident. Severe so left side pain. Wow. Disappeared yeah. tonight. Thank you, Lord, in like Jesus' name. You. This lady was Another walking with a limb. She was walking with a limb. This lady. How was your limb? What were you doing before? Once I used to feel once, but from uh, the day you came here, you said, whatsoever the sickness is, you should put your hand there. And just now, I lay my hand there, my foot started beating. Start beating, and now I can feel once. You could not feel. I could not feel your horse, but now I can feel when you pinch me, I can feel. Ah, that's a miracle. Doctor, this is a fantastic miracle. She could not feel on one side. Right. Not feel at all. Pinch me, I can feel. If you pinch, you can feel. I can feel. Only your arm or your leg. The whole side. The whole side. Yeah. Right sided. Paresthesia. 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 Wow. She could not feel. Could not feel. That means the nerves are not working. Mm. And you can feel now. I can feel. Can you feel? I can feel. You can feel this. I can feel it. You know. You can feel this. I can feel it. I'm so Doctor, happy. What is this? What could uh, this be? From a peripheral neuropathy, paresthesia, and no medication can can can, can heal it. Wow! It's a, it's, it's, it's a, a permanent problem. disability, Father, which can lead to injuries because you can't feel. Yes, very dangerous disease. 
Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. You deserve stomach, stomach pain. Stomach trouble. Stomach pain. Yes. And the honor. Receive your healing. Let them come quickly. I feel a fast anointing. Lord, we receive your healing. Receive your healing. Nobody should leave. I'm about to pray for the last blessing. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Lord, for all these miracles tonight. Receive your So many miracles. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. blessing upon the people that are gathered here tonight I speak your blessing into their lives into their houses into their dwelling places let your power go into their homes save them from bloodshed save them from curses save them from the power of demons and witchcraft and juju and medicine men in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let them serve you with joy. Let the blood of Jesus cover everyone that is gathered here with the hands lifted up. I pray, oh God, for your hand to be upon the people of Liberia. Bless Liberia with peace and development. Take away the warmongers and satanic and demonic people that stir up strife and confusion in the land. Take away from our midst those that want to shed blood and return us to confusion and to evil. Bless, O oh Lord, our land, we ask. Let it truly become a star, a shining star, a shining example, a good example. Let Christ be glorified in Liberia again. Let Christianity dominate this nation. Let the power of salvation 
and the power of Christ dominate this nation. I pray, yea, Father, even after we are gone, continue to do miracles. Send angels into all parts of Monrovia. Clean up Monrovia of all evil, of wickedness, of evil plans and plots and predictions against this nation. Clean it up, oh God. Take away the dark and evil things that are hidden to harm this nation in the future. We uproot every blood that is shed, every libation, every spell, every wicked witchcraft, plan and idea that is determined against Liberia. Oh God, we say never again. Never again shall an evil plague visit this nation, Lord. But rather your glory and your power shall visit us again. And salvation shall come. Your churches shall grow. Your blessings shall come to your people. Father, thank you that he that named the name of Christ shall stand up for Christ. And his light shall so shine for men to see the glory of God coming out of them. I ask for blessing for Liberia. I speak against the spirit of war and the spirit of confusion and the spirit of bloodshed and the spirit of murder and hatred and the spirit of division and the spirit of revenge hey father we pray for mercy we pray for grace we pray for your great blessing rather to be upon this nation take away poverty take away the lack of all things take away the diseases take away the needs hey lord and bless your people with prosperity cause our eyes to be lifted up to you from whence our help cometh cause your blessing to be upon the nation give us good leaders lord Give us men of vision and men of good ideas. Men with wisdom, Lord, who shall guide this nation into the right place at the right time. We thank you. Thank you for the churches. Thank you for the people. Thank you for miracles. I pray, Lord, continue to work miracles and let your power be at work in the life. Power, 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 power be administered into the life of everyone whose hand is lifted up now. Let there be power upon their hand. Power as they go home. Blessing on their hand and their life as they go home. Not for evil, but for good. For your will to be done in this nation. Thank you, Father. For you have greatly blessed us. We thank you. And we promise you, we, pre we promise, Lord, that we shall serve you. We promise that all men shall see and know that we belong to you and that we have changed. A great change has come over our lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise for this great blessing. And everybody shouted hallelujah and amen. Shout amen. Shout amen. You do miracles so great. You do miracles from north to south, from east to west of Liberia. We there thank you for miracles. No we thank you for healing. Like we thank you for salvation. You we thank you for Christ. Oh, we give you praise. You oh, yes, Lord. There is no, There's no one else like you. There's no one else like you, Lord. Mando Bobo Kabara Lama Oh, yes. 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 Jesus. Jesus. You deserve Jesus. the glory. You deserve the glory. Oh yes. We lift our hands in worship. Yes, we lift our hands. We lift your holy. We lift your holy name. And the glory. Yes, we lift our hands in worship. Yes, we lift our hands. We lift your holy. For your healing power Jesus in Jesus' name, Receive in Jesus' name, Receive Receive your miracle. thank you for your healing power Jesus in Jesus' name. There is no 